June 17th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 2 Kings chapters 24 and 25 from the Old Testament. During Jehoiakim's reign, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon attacked. Jehoiakim was his subject for three years, but then he rebelled against him. The Lord sent against him Babylonian, Syrian, Moabite, and Ammonite raiding bands. He sent them to destroy Judah, as he had warned he would do through his servants, the prophets. Just as the Lord had announced, he rejected Judah because of all the sins which Manasseh had committed. Because he killed innocent people and stained Jerusalem with their blood, the Lord was unwilling to forgive them. The rest of the events of Jehoiakim's reign and all his accomplishments are recorded in the scroll called the Annals of the Kings of Judah. He passed away, and his son Jehoiakim replaced him as king. The king of Egypt did not march out from his land again, for the king of Babylon conquered all the territory that the king of Egypt had formerly controlled between the brook of Egypt and the Euphrates River. Jehoiakim was 18 years old when he became king, and he reigned three months in Jerusalem. His mother was Nehushta, the daughter of El Nathan from Jerusalem. He did evil in the sight of the Lord as his ancestors had done. At that time, the generals of King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon marched to Jerusalem and besieged the city. King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon came to the city while his generals were besieging it. King Jehoiakim of Judah, along with his mother, his servants, his officials, and his eunuchs, surrendered to the king of Babylon. The king of Babylon, in the eighth year of his reign, took Jehoiakim prisoner. Nebuchadnezzar took from there all the riches in the treasuries of the Lord's temple and of the royal palace. He removed all the gold items which King Solomon of Israel had made for the Lord's temple, just as the Lord had warned. He deported all the residents of Jerusalem, including all the officials and all the soldiers, 10,000 people in all. This included all the craftsmen and those who worked with metal. No one was left except for the poorest among the people of the land. He deported Jehoiakim from Jerusalem to Babylon, along with the king's mother and wives, his eunuchs, and the high-ranking officials of the land. The king of Babylon deported to Babylon all the soldiers, there were 7,000, as well as 1,000 craftsmen and metal workers. This included all the best warriors. The king of Babylon made Mataniah, Jehoiakim's uncle, king in Jehoiakim's place. He renamed him Zedekiah. Zedekiah was 21 years old when he became king and he ruled for 11 years in Jerusalem. His mother was Hamutel, the daughter of Jeremiah from Libna. He did evil in the sight of the Lord as Jehoiakim had done. What follows is a record of what happened to Jerusalem and Judah because of the Lord's anger. He finally threw them out of his presence. Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon. So King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon came against Jerusalem with his whole army and set up camp outside it. They built siege ramps all around it. He arrived on the tenth day of the tenth month in the ninth year of Zedekiah's reign. The city remained under siege until King Zedekiah's eleventh year. By the ninth day of the fourth month, the famine in the city was so severe the residents had no food. The enemy broke through the city walls and all the soldiers tried to escape. They left the city during the night. They went through the gate between the two walls that is near the king's garden. The Babylonians were all around the city. Then they headed for the Jordan Valley. But the Babylonian army chased after the king. They caught up with him in the plains of Jericho and his entire army deserted him. They captured the king and brought him up to the king of Babylon at Riblah, where he passed sentence on him. Zedekiah's sons were executed while Zedekiah was forced to watch. The king of Babylon then had Zedekiah's eyes put out, bound him in bronze chains, and carried him off to Babylon. 
on the seventh day of the fifth month, in the nineteenth year of King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, Nebuzaradan, the captain of the royal guard who served the king of Babylon, arrived in Jerusalem. He burned down the Lord's temple, the royal palace, and all the houses in Jerusalem, including every large house. The whole Babylonian army that came with the captain of the royal guard tore down the walls that surrounded Jerusalem. Nebuzaradan, the captain of the royal guard, deported the rest of the people who were left in the city, those who had deserted to the king of Babylon and the rest of the craftsmen. But he left behind some of the poor of the land and gave them fields and vineyards. The Babylonians broke the two bronze pillars in the Lord's temple, as well as the movable stands and the big bronze basin called the sea. They took the bronze to Babylon. They also took the pots, shovels, trimming shears, pans, and all the bronze utensils used by the priest. The captain of the royal guard took the golden and silver censers and basins. The bronze of the items that King Solomon made for the Lord's temple, including the two pillars, the big bronze basin called the sea, the twelve bronze bowls under the sea, and the movable stands, was too heavy to be weighed. Each of the pillars was about 27 feet high. The bronze top of one pillar was about four and a half feet high and had bronze lattice work and pomegranate shaped ornaments all around it. The second pillar with its lattice work was like it. The captain of the royal guard took Saraya, the chief priest, and Zephaniah, the priest who was second in rank, and the three doorkeepers. From the city he took a eunuch who was in charge of the soldiers, five of the king's advisors who were discovered in the city, an official army secretary who drafted citizens for military service, and sixty citizens from the people of the land who were discovered in the city. Nebuzaradan, captain of the royal guard, took them and brought them to the king of Babylon of Riblah. The king of Babylon ordered them to be executed at Riblah in the territory of Hamath. So Judah was deported from its land. Now King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon appointed Gedaliah, son of Ahikam, son of Shaphan, as governor over the people whom he allowed to remain in the land of Judah. All of the officers of the Judahite army and their troops heard that the king of Babylon had appointed Gedaliah to govern. So they came to get Eliah at Mizpah. The officers who came were Ishmael, son of Nathaniah, Jehanan, son of Kariah, Sareah, son of Tamhamath, the Netophathite, and Jeazaniah, son of the Maacathite. Gedaliah took an oath so as to give them and their troops some assurance of safety. He said, you don't need to be afraid to submit to the Babylonian officials. Settle down in the land and submit to the king of Babylon. Then things will go well for you. But in the seventh month, Ishmael, son of Nathaniah, son of Elishama, who was a member of the royal family, came with ten of his men and murdered Gedaliah, as well as the Judeans and Babylonians who were with him at Mizpah. Then all the people, from the youngest to the oldest, as well as the army officers, left for Egypt, because they were afraid of what the Babylonians might do. In the 37th year of the exile of King Jehoiakim of Judah, on the 27th day of the 12th month, King Evil Merodach of Babylon, in the first year of his reign, pardoned King Jehoiakim of Judah and released him from prison. He spoke kindly to him and gave him a more prestigious position than the other kings who were with him in Babylon. Jehoiakim took off his prison clothes and ate daily in the king's presence for the rest of his life. He was given daily provisions by the king for the rest of his life until the day he died. God, I keep thinking about all these people taken captive, exiled to Babylon. And not all of them were guilty of what they were being exiled for. Um, 
many of them, it was their parents, grandparents, so forth. Kind of the sins of the father thing. I And I have no doubt some of them, I'm sure, were sinning against you as well. Uh, but not all of them. We actually do see this remnant, this Davidic line, continue to follow through. But I think... I think about our sins in our lives and how many choices we make that aren't your will and aren't your path. And sometimes we see how they affect our lives, those wrong choices. Once in a while we get to see how they affect other people's lives, but I wonder how often we think about them affecting future generations. You know, I was, I was just at graduation the other night, just so incredibly proud, but but looking at this child, knowing that what their parents had done was going to affect her and does affect her. And unless she intentionally deals with it with you, it will probably affect her children. And I, I, I turned to my friend and I said, I wonder how many generations that one sin that was done 15 years ago I wonder what that one sin, how much residual effect that's going to have on people. And I think back to my own life. Even today, I make wrong choices and sin against you. But, you know, 10 years ago, I was making drastic choices <laughs> against you and definitely sinning against you. And I think how many of those choices were compounded, not, n not just within my life, although... I definitely have seen those, but compounded because they affected other people. And then perhaps those people pass that on to their children as well. And all because of my choice. And we're seeing the same story here uh, with Judah ending up exiled to Babylon. How many, how many of my choices today, God, are going to affect future generations? And, and the opposite of that gets really exciting, right? Do I follow your will today? And if I follow your will today, how many future generations will that affect? Because you have mighty plans for all of us. I don't know these stories about the exile to Babylon, and especially with the fact that some of the stories in Daniel are some of my favorite in the Bible. This whole, this whole idea of consequences for our actions and taking responsibility and how much it's going to affect other people including innocent people as we make these choices uh, again good and bad in our daily life God I just ask that you help us be intentional today that as we move through our lives and move through relationships and move through work and in our family life that we're just intentional and fully aware that everything we are doing has consequences, good and bad consequences. And if we are choosing your will, those consequences will be good because you promise to make all things good uh, that come from those choices. God, I do know that you have every right to be this angry at us and, and exile us. I think sometimes we get exiled to our own sin areas where you just wash your hands of us and you have every right to do so but God please don't give up on us we are here we are trying there's a remnant of us that that just keeps trying to be vocal and tell other people about your amazing love your grace your forgiveness thank you for that strength in your son's name I pray amen <music>